Today we're going to be speaking with the president and founder of Windows to My Soul Equine Therapy. Her name is Cindy and her clinic is based here in Somerset. So Cindy, can you go ahead and tell me a little bit about what you do? So we're a trauma-focused equine assisted therapy program. Uh, we work primarily with veterans, first responders, um, victims of domestic violence, and also perpetrators of domestic violence, trying to help both sides of that equation, and uh, quite a lot with kids. Really? Yeah. And how did you get into this? What made you choose equine therapy? So um, in our program, we always work with um, a mental health professional and uh, an equine professional. And I come to this from the equine side. I'm not a mental health professional. We, we hire mental health professionals here. And um, I have my own traumatic background, really traumatic childhood. And um, when I retired from the Bay Area, there was, um, um, horses came into my life for the first time since I was a kid and I noticed some changes and shifts in my own behavior and in my PTSD and I wanted to understand why. So I started researching and looking into some of the reasons that my life was changing. Mm -hmm. And when I discovered those things, I wanted to start a program that would allow people the opportunity to access horses and, and heal their PTSD. So it was a, um, first it was about me and then it became about sharing what I've learned and how my life has changed as a result of that. And do you love what you do? I do love what yeah. I do. <laughs> um, the, uh, the work in the arena with our clients um, is, um, is life-changing and so I am super passionate about doing that and bringing education to people around what happens to the brain and the body when we experience trauma. It's very real biological changes. So watching somebody um, shift those biological changes back to something that is a more livable experience for them, a more fulfilling experience in their life. Um, yeah, it's like, um, it, you know, most of what we do here is volunteer. So while we have a paid clinical staff, the rest of the work around developing this is, um, is a volunteer program. And um, people ask, aren't you tired? Or can you find something else better? And like, yes, all of those things. But I can't imagine living a more purpose-filled life, making, right. helping people with this. So, yeah. So tell me a little bit about the process. I mean, do people just come in here and jump on a horse or how, how does it work? What is it yeah. that you guys do, yeah. you know, to get people comfortable and, and feeling safe? And yeah, so our program is, is really based in, in like, like two steps maybe if you put it down. It's not, uh, it doesn't always look like this, but we look first at a person's ability to regulate. So we come to this with an understanding about what happens in the brain, very real biological changes when somebody has experienced trauma and particularly somebody that's experienced lots of trauma like our first responders or uh, children in an abusive environment. We understand how the brain is changed because of that and how those changes limit our ability to um, to stay calm in stressful situations, and then also have relationships. So if you think about your life, you um, the very foundation of our ability to live in the world exists on our ability to stay calm and then have relationships. We can't even go to the grocery store unless we can in some way be relational. So that starts with ourselves and it starts with then our family and then our extended family, our community, and then into the community at large. So we're looking at where a person might be stuck in parts of their brain um, and in their nervous system that keeps them from doing that. And then we design a program that helps them rebuild the neural pathways to a more successful life. Um, so we start out with how do we become calm? And that's called regulation. So we look at a person's, like where they might be stuck. Some people have a hard time moving fluidly. Some people have 
quick to temper. Some people are um, um, reclusive. They need to not be around other people because the stimulus is too much for them. So we look at all those things and then we start to teach them about regulation, which is um, finding a place of rhythmic pattern repetitive movement, which is what we learn in, we, our brains start developing in our mother's womb to her heartbeat, to their, um, her breath, to her movement. That's hopefully rhythmic pattern and repetitive. And that's what we reintroduce, reintroduce to our clients. So we walked out here. Um, we walk around here all the time by in introducing walking in a rhythmic way, that is our first step to introducing regulation. And then we have all kinds of tools that we bring out in this environment that is um, conducive to experience. And, um, and one of the things that we do is writing. So if a person is ready and can find some connection with the horse, we'll put them on the horse. And we start now start to introduce connection and relationship to the rhythmic pattern repetitive movement and a horse will then with their rhythmic pattern movement introduce this to just so you know we have some horses coming around the corner <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> he might be really interested in the camera <laughs> and we have a little donkey coming too so they're coming together so i you know he's just been rolling in the dirt so it's really filthy so okay so the riding on the back of the horse moves a person in a rhythmic pattern repetitive way and through that we introduce connection to them and it may be the first time that they really can feel their body physically and um, emotionally connect to their bodies um, and um, so we that is called rhythmic riding um, but not everybody has that ability to have to have a horse at home so we do that here and then we, we we introduce all other kinds of tools for somebody to connect to rhythm in their life and that's the first step in uh, regulation so when we introduce regulation we're calming the lower regions of the brain so we can access the higher regions of the brain which is our limbic system our ability to feel emotion and um, our neocortex and our ability to think so uh, and problem solve all of which with somebody with PTSD those parts of the brain get locked away um, because of their trauma and how their brain has um, uh, developed as a result of their trauma so then after that after we we get to some somebody a point where they are able to um, hi buddy uh, able to regulate we start introducing relationship concepts relationships like are good for both what a healthy relationship is and then the horses become our relationship partners so that they can um, um, te teach a person and they're learning from a person they're learning from our clients as well how to have healthy relationships that's good so the horses obviously enjoy their jobs as well um, I think they do but we're also really careful about making sure that they're not um, asked to do more than they should uh, so you can tell this guy and this guy are <laughs> not at all worried about <laughs> about strange people coming into their into their area and um, there are times just like us where they are um, um, today's not the day to work yep. so uh, <laughs> our clients learn how to uh, to read that body language and we work really hard for good for both so any relationship that is good for both is a healthy relationship but if it's somewhere in the in the area not good for both then um, it becomes a toxic relationship so you said a lot of the work around here is volunteer based um, how do people become a volunteer? Are you guys taking volunteers from just anybody, really? Or um, do they need to get certified? Uh, how does this yes. program work? So um, anybody that works with clients, there's a significant education process. Um, so our clinical team right now consists of two uh, mental health professionals, a uh, licensed clinical social worker and equine professionals. Um, I'm one of those equine professionals and then we have another equine professional and um, those jobs require a lot of uh, investment in training and education, um, both uh, on the mental health side as well as the equine side. So uh, our mental health pr practitioners have been working in the field of trauma with 
um, veterans, uh, first responders, and children for you know 20 years or more. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, our equine professionals have spent at least the last five years studying uh, trauma-informed care. So that's kind of the path to becoming, uh, to working with clients. Those are paid positions. Um, our volunteer positions are usually around either um, planning and organizing like events to help us raise money um, and um, facility work, some of that. Um, we don't have a lot of volunteer positions for, uh, for the horses because the work that we do is private. It's, it's, it's clinical therapy, so um, there's not a lot of, most of the time out here is quiet with just, um, you know, a mental health professional, equine professional client and a herd of horses. So, um, but our, our, um, uh, our business is run by mostly volunteers. So, um, yeah, it's amazing. So we really believe in, uh, I talked about connection and I talked about relationship and then the community aspect of it is really important. So from the very beginning, uh, Windows has been blessed with people that really support us. We started in veteran work um, and individuals with developmental disabilities. And um, from that point on, there was, has always been, you know, um, El Dorado County is rich in veterans. Mm -hmm. So it's a community, it's, it's something that um, the community needed and looked for. And all of the programs that we, um, that we bring to bear, like the different populations are ser we're serving is directly because of what the community needs. And so therefore the community has been really responsive in supporting us and our, um, our galas and our events where we raise money and in our big gala you know we have over 150 50 volunteers helping to create that event so that is amazing i know That's it's truly amazing i know it's super amazing mm -hmm. that we have such great support so what do you recommend for people like myself how can we help those with ptsd what is your advice to us and maybe those who are suffering from ptsd Wow, that's a really good question. Um, I think the first thing um, that is um, important is if we start to understand what's happening, like education on what's happening in the brain and the body and the reasons for that, so that when our friends who have PTSD um, have uh, a triggering moment, that we better understand what's happening for them and to them, and that they, necess they don't necessarily have control over those things. So um, um, if we're living in the lower regions of our brain, uh, in that fight or flight or the freeze part of our brain, um, having some education on how to help them out of that is really important. Um, because just telling them to breathe doesn't work. Right, right. <laughs> Because they don't have access to that part of their brain, the neocortex, that allows them to say, oh, I just need to breathe, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so understanding that, getting that education, there's a lots of different ways. Windows to My Soul offers education on that. Um, there's, a, there's an ACES collaboration in El Dorado County that is all about early childhood trauma and teaching people about what happens to the brain and the body. That's a great way to... to um, to get some education. You know, people who are suffering from PTSD, how, how do you recommend them to taking this step to getting the help that they need? I mean, yeah. what is your advice to them? Yeah. Um, um, first of all, I think it's important uh, for all of us to understand whether or not we have PTSD or not is that, um, this is very real biological changes in our brain and our body. And our brain and our body do this to keep us safe at a certain point in, in our traumatic, during our traumatic events. And then when we um, are no longer in those traumatic events, for those of us who've experienced ongoing traumatic events, our body stays in those, in those places that keep us safe but no longer are valid. It's normal, it makes, okay, so our body is keeping us safe. Now we have to help the brain and the body come out of these places and live a more healthy life. Um, and then the second um, piece is, is that be willing to take a step forward 
and find a place that is um, comfortable for you. And everybody has a different place, but comfortable and safe so that you can work through your trauma. Um, Windows to My Soul is built outside here. We're, we're outside in nature because we think the experience of being outside in nature and, and becoming present in this environment um, is a safe way to start to redevelop skills that, um, that help us live a more fulfilling life and leave some of that trauma behaviors in the past. Um, so we think that this is a safe place, but for everyone, it, they should find a place that feels safe to start taking steps to move forward. Amazing. Yes, yeah, so we have a website. You can find us on uh, uh, windows2mysoul.org, and uh, our office line is 530-620-2760. And, yeah, call us. We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. Yes, I definitely recommend you give her a call. This is such a great and relaxing environment.